The NFL season is finally here and it's crucial to understand which QBs are in prime position to perform both above and below their line of expectation on a week by week basis. Please, please, please submit all of your start sit questions in the comment section below. That's why I'll be getting these styles of videos out way early on in the week. But without further ado, here are your week one start and sit options at the quarterback position. We're going to want to start Jared Goff this week against Kansas City. Goff comes off of a bounce back season where he had 29 passing touchdowns in Detroit. And honestly, this game right here has the makings to be a shootout. The experts in Vegas have the matchup set at an over under of 54 points. That's the highest of any matchup in week one. Kansas City has been among the bottom 12 in the league in passing yards allowed over the course of the last two years. And virtually everyone on that starting 11 is the same except... Chris Jones is holding out, so from a pass rushing perspective, maybe the pocket gets a little cleaner for Jared Goff in this opening week matchup, but in all honesty, I am playing into the narrative that the Chiefs could win comfortably here. I think the Lions make this a much closer ball game later on in the year, but they obviously don't have Jamison Williams. Amon Ross St. Brown is questionable, but was practicing two days ago, so maybe he's good to go. We'll keep an eye on that. And there were some more changes and just more pieces missing right now for Detroit, so I'm thinking the defending Super Bowl champs get out ahead early and then Jared Goff just starts slinging it to keep up, which from a fantasy perspective, we absolutely love. Let's go ahead and smack the start option on Justin Herbert against the Miami Dolphins. This matchup is all types of exciting for a couple of reasons, really. It's week one, meaning that bruised up wide receiving core from last year is actually healthy all at once for once. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams played just seven games together last season, and in some of those, one or the other left with injury. But one of those seven games was against this Miami team, where Justin Herbert threw for a ridiculous 357 yards with one touchdown pass and no picks. The second factor is that Kellen Moore holds the clipboard for this offense, somebody who revitalized and brought the best out of a Dallas Cowboys offense that ended last year fourth in the league in scoring at 26.8 points per game. Miami's secondary struggled in general last season, allowing 1.7 passing touchdowns per game, bottom eight in the league. So a healthy receiving core, an exciting new addition at offensive coordinator, and a weak opposition on defense. Let's go ahead and buy in on a Justin Herbert start in week one. Lamar Jackson against Houston. Lamar Jackson is the player I got the most flack for in the preseason rankings videos. Corey, this guy is a generational talent, and you have him at fringe top 10 for QBs. What are you doing? All right, folks, I heard it all. I'm buying Lamar Jackson in week one against Houston. Look, I'm not denying his talent. It's just the 10 games he missed in the last two years were daunting to me. But hey, Lamar's healthy right now. Let's hold our breath. Rashad Bateman's healthy right now. You know Houston needs to respect the run game with both Lamar Jackson and a healthy J.K. Dobbins back there. Look, anytime you have a quarterback with rushing upside against a team that they're expected to beat by 10, it probably means we're going to see the Ravens running the ball in the second half to chew that clock down. Houston is going through the definition of a rebuild. Nearly everyone on the offense is either young or new to the team, so I don't exactly see the Texans stringing together a ton of long drives that would eat up time of possession in week one of a long journey. That's going to give Lamar plenty of time to rack up points, both through the air and on the ground. Now to our sit section, folks. These quarterbacks I'm projecting will perform below their average performance, and we'll start with Brock Purdy against Pittsburgh. Brock Purdy should have a nice year due to his strong supporting cast, but I am sitting him in week one against this Steelers team. Sure, right? You have a dump off machine in Christian McCaffrey who is healthy and ready to go, but the investment in him is indicative of the 49ers culture. They want to run, run, and run the ball some more. And since making his first start midseason, Brock Purdy averaged 26.8 pass attempts per game throughout the remainder of the regular season. Now that is right on brand for a San Francisco 49ers squad that was 27th in the NFL in pass attempts per game. Now let's factor in that he's playing against a stingy defense in front seven that features TJ Watt, someone who logged 22 and a half sacks in 2021. Look, it is going to be a battle between one of the best offensive lines in the league and a team that is built on their ability to make life difficult for quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers against Buffalo, I am selling the crap out of that. Look, I think this offense in New York can be super exciting. I mentioned this in the quarterback rankings video we did ahead of the season as well, and I will stick to this point. Aaron Rodgers will make Garrett Wilson and company better, but I'm not sure the Jets help out Aaron Rodgers in terms of his fantasy value. Outside of playing Miami, Rodgers is going to have four guaranteed tough games from a fantasy football perspective as he has to face off against Buffalo and New England twice each. Now, yes, Buffalo did lose Tremaine Edmonds, but that is just a dent 
when you look at a team that has allowed just 18.7 points per game in the last two years combined, they have been dominant. Aaron Rodgers in his career is averaging just 235 pass yards per game with five passing touchdowns to four interceptions in four games against Buffalo. This team is a mix of Aaron Rodgers' old buddies and Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb and young, spudding talent in Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. I'm really interested to see how long it takes for everyone to mesh. And look, this team's going to have to be off to the races right away if they want a chance against Buffalo. I don't think that bodes well for Aaron Rodgers' fantasy value. Lastly, I'm not touching Daniel Jones since I believe he's going to put on a lower than average fantasy performance against these Dallas Cowboys. Yes, Daniel Jones has rushing upside that I absolutely love. I've been selling that all year in fantasy drafts if you guys have been following along. And look, 12 to 13 times out of the year, I am starting Daniel Jones. This is one of those four to five games where I will gladly sit him because I don't see him getting out of the pocket and escaping a pass rushing attack led by Micah Parsons, at least successfully, too often. He's only throwing 171 yards per game across seven contests against Dallas in four of those seven games. Daniel Jones didn't even throw a touchdown, and he had a completion percentage in the high 50s. This should be another game where Daniel Jones needs to get the ball out fast. That's usually how it goes for most teams against Dallas. And with a lack of elite receiving weapons outside of Darren Waller at the tight end position, it could be a rough day all around for this Giants team. Thank you folks for watching. As always, please drop any questions I was unable to answer in the comment section below, including those start and sit questions. Like and subscribe if I helped you in terms of your fantasy football knowledge today, and we will see you in the next video.